Can you? Loud and clear. I need your attention this morning. Just looking for my notes. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you for the message, Jobber. It's always good to hear it from somebody that lives it. When you have that revelation, you know, I, I had that revelation of tithing, so I can speak from the heart that when I hear somebody else, I know that they've had that revelation. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to hear the word of God this morning? All of you. Great. Let us close our eyes this morning as we prepare our hearts. I want you to quiet from your hearts. I want you to quiet from your minds now this morning. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord God. We stand in your house. We stand in your presence, God. And I ask this morning, Lord, that you teach through us, you speak to us through your word, which is living. Your word, which is the final authority, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for everything you do in our lives, Father God. We thank you that you show us the rightful paths, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you've got a plan and a purpose for our lives, Father. And that you guide us and you lead us in that plan until it comes into fruition. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in each and every person's heart here this morning. We quieten our hearts right now, Father God. And we open it up and we listen to you. You let us have revelation and understanding of your word and what it is that you are saying to us this morning. Let it be known, Holy Spirit, that I do not rely on my own limited abilities, but I rely solely on you this morning. And I ask that you speak to me in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, everybody. Today I would like to speak to you in the title of my message is God is Love. So we're going to look at that today, but I'm going to show you Specifically, we're going to have an understanding of the word love, which is in reference to God. Because we have an understanding from a man's perspective of what the word love is, correct? But God looks at it different and he speaks about it differently. And I want us to have that understanding of the love that he's talking about. And what does the Bible specifically say about that? So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn with me to 1 John 4 verse 16. Um, if you don't, don't stress too much. I will have it on the overhead. Thank you, Nick. So we look at the scripture. 1 John 4, verse 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Then it says, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. This is the love that I'm referring to today. For the word of God tells us that everything that God does is motivated out of who he is. If you think about it, where he took you from, the thoughts that he had for you, the plan that he had for you, everything was motivated out of love. The word specifically says that he is that word. He is love. So you think about the word love, you think of God. When you think of God, you think of love. Correct. Now I found myself the other day, um, I can't remember if I was driving in my car, or whether I was sitting in my office in my prayer time, in my quiet time, and I said to the Lord, I just felt it in my heart, I said, Lord, please just show me. Let me have a sense or an understanding, even if it's just a fraction, of the love that you have for your people. Just show me, Lord. I want to experience, because you read about things in the Bible, you read about the accounts of the Israelites and all that they did, and the behavior of them. You look at the world that we found was taking place in the and you look at people, what they call themselves Christians, but they're not acting Christ-like. And I looked at that and I thought, Lord, just please, let me have an understanding because I'm trying to. Show me, let me sense that, what type of love that you have for this people that is unconditional. That looks past that, that looks past our sin, that looks past our ways, and it just looks at us with that pure love. And when I was praying there, the Lord showed me, and as I was reading through the Old Testament, through the prophets of the Old, and how I was reading through that, and how the prophets would, yes, the Word of God would rebuke them and convict them. Because the people would always run off and do their own thing, wouldn't they? They would go on their own way, go after the things and the lust of the flesh, the wickedness that the Word speaks about, the deceitfulness, the lust of the flesh. But yet deep down there was always... Love for the people that they had. 
He had such a love for the people that from the time of sin, when sin entered the world, the time of Adam and Eve, right from there, the love of God that he had for his people was always to bring them back into fellowship with him. Because this word is specific and it says there that he is love. Every book that we read in the Bible speaks about it, speaks specifically about the love for the people, the love that he people had, the love for the people that he had. Turn from your wicked ways. We read about the accounts over and over again. Turn from your wicked ways. Come back to your first love. I've preached about it. Come back to your first love. We read the parables. And one that stands out specifically is the parable of the lost son. And we know the account there where he wanted his inheritance. And he said, Father, give me your inheritance that I may spend it now. I want it now. How many times have we desired and said things, I want things now. I want it now. I don't want to wait. Don't you miss the word. He wanted his inheritance now. So the father gave him his inheritance. And off he went. And he squandered it. On all the things of the flesh. All the desires of the world. Every single cent that he had, he wasted. We know the account, don't we? Where did he end up? Sleeping and eating with the pigs. Sharing the food with the pigs. All while his father was waiting for him, ready, lovingly. And I know that he, I know he was in love. In my heart I know that his father knew that he was in love. He knew in his heart that he was in love. And that time when he walks and we read the account of as he comes back down the road and the father lovingly runs to his son, embraces his son, puts his ring on his finger, jacket or cloak on him, saying, you are under a new covenant. Welcome back home, my son. I don't care what's happened in the past. I don't care what you've done. I don't want to hear about it. It's got nothing to do with it. I love you. True love is what I'm speaking about. Non-conditional love. Family, we have to have an understanding of God's love. Because it is the foundation of our faith in Christianity. If I cannot fathom and I can't understand that type of love that he has for his people, the Christian walk is not going to be what it needs to be. The foundation that I need to build has to be built on knowing who God is and the love that he has for his people. Embrace love. Think about it. You can take it one step further and you can say, if we remove God's love, there wouldn't be a Savior. Would there? Because we know the scripture, John 3.16 says, for he so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son. So he that didn't love us, like the Word of God says that he is love, there wouldn't be a Savior. We would have no help of salvation. Where were we destined to go? To help. Correct. For the sins. For we were living in sin. We were under a curse. But Jesus said, I love you too much. Throughout the Bible and from the beginning of the word, we read about how God showed and revealed to his people that he was a God of love and he was a God of mercy. A God of love and a God of mercy. That's the God that we serve. And the fascinating and amazing thing that the word says there that God is love. It doesn't say that he acts on love or he gives love. He receives. It says there that he is love. It is his nature. It is his characteristic. It is who he is. Turn with me if you can to Genesis 1 verse 20. I want you to see this. Because I know a lot of people that I speak to throughout the times and throughout the day say, oh, but I'm not capable of love. I'm not capable of giving. I'm not capable of receiving. You don't know what's happened to me. I want to point you in the direction of the Word of God, which states and says there in Genesis 1.26. It says, then God said, let us, who was he referring to us as being? The Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. So if God is love, 
If we have been created in his image and his likeness, we therefore have his nature. Correct? Would you agree on that? So therefore we are able then to walk in love. Correct. We are made according to his likeness, according to his image. And the word says that he is love. Therefore we are to walk in love. What is the first command and the second command? It says, love thy God and love thy the first and second commandment says, walk in love. Walk in love. That is how we are to walk. And then I'm reminded of, and I look at to the love that he has for us, where it speaks about his love for his people, his love for creation, where Jesus, think about this. I want you to just picture this. Seated on the throne. Left his throne. To take on human form. To come walk the earth. Humility, not in royalty, not in splendor, in grandeur, but in humility. Born in a manger, to walk the earth, lay aside all his deity, ultimately walk all the way to the cross, which is behind us, to willingly be nailed onto the cross. The word says that no man can take his life, he gave up. He gave up his love because he loved us. True love is what I'm talking about. Love motivated his desire to bring his plan into fruition. Love motivated his desire from the time that that plan was put into motion. Jesus said, I'll go. I will go. Send me. I love We see in the Old Testament generals how God through Noah affirmed his love for his creation. So God looked on Noah and saw a man righteous. By the blessing of Abraham, we spoke about this. I've given a sermon on that. We are under the inheritance of us. Correct? So by the blessing of Abraham, God called Abraham to be blessed. That is, his descendants who we are would be blessed. Correct? Love of the Father. God revealed himself to Moses. And show that he was a God of mercy and a God of goodness. Moses said, reveal yourself, let me see. God revealed his love to the children of Israel. And we read the accounts of what all they did. And what was interesting to know about that is that love was not based on their performance. <laughs> they didn't deserve it. Trust. God's love is not based on our performance. But it's based on who he is. I am love. Therefore I shall love. And what's the great thing that says that it's who God is, not who God was, past tense. It's who God is. Future, present, and past. It's who he is. He's the same. The Word of God tells us that He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And the same tomorrow. I love. For I am love. Turn with me to 1 John 4 verse 10. One John 4 verse 10. The Word says, In this is love. Not that we love God. So John's saying, in this is love. I'm going to tell you, it's not that we love God, but this is love. But that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. This was the exchange. He took on our sins. He took on our transgressions. The sin that was due us, he took it on him. Isaiah talks about it. He bore it all. True love is what we're referring to here. When we say that God is love, we understand that it is non-conditional. It's not based on our performance. It's not based on our behavior. It's not based on what we deserve. He's saying, I am love and I love you. It's not man-made. Our man-made mind tries to fathom the word love. And we try to condition about it and try to make sense of it. For real love, God says, is that he loved us and that he sent his son to die for us on the cross. 
and to take our sin that was due to us and our, um, not sin, our punishment that was due for us. He said, I'm going to take it. Put it on me, Father. Let me take it for them that they shouldn't have to. True love, non-conditional love, Any time could he have said, no, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I've had it with it. We read the accounts of the Old Testament time and time and time again. He could have said, you know what? No more. I've had enough. But he didn't. I love it in the New Testament. We look at Philip when he was with Jesus. And I can imagine the account of this as they're all standing around now. Jesus is performing miracles. He's doing all great wonders. He's healing the sick, he's feeding the thousands of thousands. To which Philip asks him and says, show us the Father. Let me see the Father. Who is this Father? We've seen the Messiah. Yes, you the but who is the Father? To which Jesus addresses it in John 14, verse 7. The sound of Bibles being played in a church is holy. John 14, verse 7 says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. So Jesus says, You want to know the Father? Look at me. Look at me. For everything I do is not my will. Everything that I do, the way I act, the words that I speak, that is the you want to see the characteristic of the Father. You want to see the nature and the love of the Father. Look at me. That is what he's saying. When we read the accounts of this wonderful miracles that Jesus did, the miracles he had performed, the time that he had for the people, how he addressed the people, the humility, the nature of God. True nature of God. True love. 9 verse B says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you show? How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Uh, Jesus revealed to us and he demonstrated the Father's love by the words that he spoke and by the works that he spoke. Every word that he spoke, every deed, every miracle that he performed was to show us the love of the Father, the nature of the Father. He said, look at me and you'll understand who the Father is. You know, as I was reading and preparing, God's got me in Revelation at the moment, and I was reading and preparing in Revelation, and continuing in the subject of God's love, and he brought me to the verse of Revelation 3, verse 20. Turn there if you can. Revelation 3, verse 20. It says there, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. The word says there, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. The word doesn't say, Behold, I'm banging on your door. Behold, I'm breaking down your door. Behold, I'm pushing through your door. It says there, Behold, I stand at knock. And then it goes on to say that I won't be forcing myself in. I'll wait for it. I'll wait for it. If it takes one year, if it takes ten years, I'll wait for it. True love knows no time. True love knows no condition. When you open for me, the word says that then I will come in and I will sit. That is love. He's knocking. When we open, he will come and dine with us, the word says. So 
family, we have to have a revelation and understanding of this type of love. Because then and only then can we walk in that love. When we have a revelation and understanding of his characteristic, his nature, when I see what he did on the cross, how he willingly went on the cross and he paid his cross for me, a sinner, willingly went on that cross. True love. Then, only then, would I be able to walk in it. We are all called to love God's people. And a lot of people need a lot of love. I'm serious. It's harder to love some people than others. Let's be honest. But they're all God's people. And Jesus never once said, you know what, I will do this for you, but I'm not doing this for you. You don't deserve it. He said, I'll do it for everyone. I'm going to pay the price for everyone. But you say to me, Pastor, you don't know. You've got no idea what Sally said about me. You've got no idea what Peter did to me, the things he did to me, the things he said about me. You've got absolutely no idea. If you had any idea, you would understand that I can't love that person. Think about it. Jesus, for one second, while he was on that cross, said, Father, you hear the things that they are saying? Look at the things that they have done to you. What did he say? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. True love. The love of the Father. And I'm going to leave it right there. I want you to bow your head. Reveal to us your word, Father. Your nature and characteristic is love. Your word says that you are love. Everything about you is love. But you've got a plan, a purpose for our life, Lord God. Because you love us, Lord. We are called to walk in that love. Your word says that we are made in your image and your life. Capable of giving, but we are also capable of receiving. This morning, Lord, I ask that you lay down whatever is causing that burden, whatever is causing, causing that restriction, Lord Father God, to experience. Whatever has happened to us in the past, Father God, is forgiven in that. Jesus took it all, he paid it all. And we are called to walk this earth like Christ. And be Christ like that's what it means to be a Christian. Too quickly, we want to pick up the badge and put it on up top and say, I'm a Christian. But you know what? Being a Christian is being Christ like. So we are to walk like Christ. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you reveal yourself in a new, fresh way to us this morning. And I pray, Father, that each and every person sees. Them experience, Lord. Let them have a sense of the love that you have for each and every one of us. Give them a taste of that. Let their hearts right now experience that love for them. Let their heart be soft and light.
just stand far and be far from the things of this world, Father, the desires of this flesh. Keep us far from temptation. Let us desire one thing, one thing only, and that's the relationship with you. struggling in an area. Maybe they're struggling to love. Maybe they're struggling to receive love because of what's happened to them in the past. I ask that you come up to the front this morning and let me pray for you. And I ask Jesus and Jesus will heal you from that pain. He'll take that pain from you. He says to you, come to me for my yoke and my heart. You shouldn't be carrying that burden. in certain areas I ask that you come forward this way. Come to Jesus this way. And thirdly, maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've never met him. Maybe you stem from a place of religion. Maybe you've through your childhood heard about this God and heard about this Jesus, but you've never had a true living relationship with him. Allow me to pray for you this morning. We'll pray together and we'll invite, we'll invite Jesus to Come take his rightful place in your heart. So if that's you, if you need prayer, maybe you haven't met Jesus, maybe you haven't made him your Lord and Savior. I ask that you come forward this morning. For all the others, I'm going to release you this morning. I'm going to thank you for your obedience, for coming to church. I know that you are hungry, hungry to hear the word, hungry to hear about the things of the Lord, hungry to hear God speak to you. I pray that He answers your prayers. So when you leave this place, we ask that the angels encamp around you, keep you safe, bring you back again next week. And we can hear more about the things of the Lord. We can hear more about His heart. We can get to know Him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.